Well, hi folks. Sunday, July, what are we in, 6th? Um, 5th. I guess it's the 5th today. Uh, trust everybody is, uh, everybody is fine, well. So what did you think about uh, the Russian election? I find it intriguing. Uh, although someone said, well, it was all rigged, but uh, who knows? But uh, just, uh, I'm looking at what they've done. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, sure if you have a leader for life sort of thing. I don't know if that, I don't think that's a good idea. But on the premise, uh, the reason a person told them th thought it was rigged is they said, well, look, they printed the Constitution out so people could read it before the vote, so it was almost a foregone conclusion, or they wouldn't have printed it. But think about this. If you're going to have, to have something change dr drastically like that, you want people to see it in print, see what you're actually going to do before they go to vote. Uh, you know, uh, here we're just voting on promises, someone dancing on clouds telling us to do this, that, and the other thing. And we vote on that. We take them at their word. And uh, I think we've learned that with Pierre, Justin Trudeau and Pierre Trudeau and Mulroney and all of our past prime ministers that you can't, in political parties, you can't just take them at their word. They should put something in writing. And what did they have? A 60-plus turnout and uh, a 70-plus uh, a 70 plus uh, acceptance uh, vote, voted yes. So this, the 60% turnout is fairly, fairly decent and of course 70% plus of that 60% turnout voted yes. So a lot of people voted no and a lot of people didn't show up but there's always that case in an election. There's always people who don't bother to sort of get involved. But I thought it was intriguing. Two of the things, some of the things I thought were intriguing where uh, the Russian Orthodoxy religion is the religion. They sort of mentioned that in the Constitution. Uh, so they're, they're, they're looking at faith. Uh, they're looking at families. Marriage is between a man and a woman. And I know everybody's going to scream here that, it's, that that's really prejudiced. But, uh, I mean, if you want to base on science, base your thing on science, uh, I think that's perhaps what the Soviets did. They look at what's going on in North America and say, we don't want anything like that happening here. Uh, yeah, so I sort of, uh, whether you agree with it or not, at least they, they made a statement. They made a stand. And uh, from that point of view, it was a sort of great. And then they looked at culture and history. No, t no destroying of statues. And I suppose, and that's what I feel about North America. We have all these yahoos and idiots going out pulling down statues of Christopher Columbus, John A. MacDonald, Captain Vancouver, uh, hell even spray painting Jimi Hendrix. Um, but I think, from my point of view, that why tear down a statue? And I think like the Russians have said, you know, we have a history, we have a past that is part of our culture. And in our past, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. But we're not going to destroy everything because there was more good came out of it than bad. More good than ugly has come out of this. And that's who we are as a Russian people. That's who we are. And uh, I thought, wow, somebody has the balls to sort of make a statement about who they are. And uh, quit uh, catering to the fringe, the fringe part and the idiots. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how they how they roll along, and of course in, in in Russia they say they have a more open internet than they do in China. They're not as censored, but they don't suffer fools. They're not bleeding hearts. But here is a very strong foundation for that country moving forward. And then when you look over at China, they have the same thing. They're more maybe more censored. Uh, the CCP. They control what people are seeing and hearing. They don't have, they're not as open as maybe they are in Russia. But again, uh, they know what everybody's doing. Everybody sort of squeals on one another. Not everybody, but a great portion. They uh, pick up the phone and will call or pick up their cell and call, I should say. 
Um, but again, CC, the CCP, Xi Ping is there for life. I don't know if that's a good idea. And as uh, a Chinese friend said, well, he might not be, because in and within the party itself, the 2,000 plus members, they're always fighting about who's going to be leader. So there's always that political haranguing that the population doesn't see. But again, there's another country that has solidified themselves. So you have Russia here, you have China, all solidified. Then we look at Great Britain. What can you say about it? It's crazy. You look at uh, Canada. What can you say about it? We're sort of crazy. You look at the States. What can you say about it? We're sort of crazy. Then when you look back at how long this has been in planning for the international, uh, the IMF, the world, the, the uh, United Nations, the WHO, the elites, the, the international bankers, which is IMF. I mean, they've had a plan for a long time, and those plans are available. You can dig them up, find them on the internet, of how they wanted to restructure the world. And they were looking to China to be a leader. The rest of us to be sending our wood and our oil and everything somewhere else and just uh, not having manufacturing, not being a focal, a focal port, part of the, uh, of the future world order as they see it, uh, controlled by the United Nations, by international bodies, and just basically slaves. Uh, so, and give, offering up our natural resources. And the sad thing is, I think our leaders are involved with that, especially Trudeau. I mean, he's bought right into that, from hook, line, and sinker. Uh, you, you can see from what he does, how he speaks. Uh, I mean, he is, just really would like to be a Putin or a Xi Jinping, but uh, he just doesn't have the brass for that. He is sort of a, a sort of a weak, wishy-washy sort of leader, and uh, so I think it's we have to. We're at a point where the the uh, silent majority have to stand up and say something. If we don't, if we don't stand up and do something, we're going to be in trouble. I mean, we're 100 and what, 50, 153 years old as a country, Canada, the U.S. 242 or whatever it is. Uh, but we're, we're in the throes of the Roman Empire in its last days when you look at it. I mean, what we're doing is what they did in Rome before their collapse. Not after their first 143 years they didn't do that. Not after their first 242 years Rome wasn't doing that. No empire has. They have some leadership, they have some direction. And uh, I mean, ours has started uh, uh, so far back that uh, the politically correct crowd, our educators, we've watered everything down uh, to where people are schooled and brainwashed, but they don't have an education. You know, you look at these people pulling down statues in North America, they, they had an understanding of history. If they, had, if they had an understanding of culture, if they understood things in perspective, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and sorted that through, not blame a statue on their inequities. There are, we have raised a fragile bunch of, of twits and idiots when you look at it. Now, not all young people are that way. Not all young people, don't get me wrong, we're not painting the whole group of them, but a majority of them are. And I think... Where are the adults in the, on the continent? I think we have to stand up and say, look, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Uh, I know people disagree with that, but I think the country has to have a faith, you have to have family, and you, you have to have culture and history and appreciation of that and be proud of who you are. And until we, the silent majority stands up and says, this is who we are. And in Canada, there you come from the East Coast, through, through Quebec and Ontario, through the prairies, there are solid people there who know what we're about. Uh, have they been here forever? No. Well, the country's only 143 years old. But, uh, so, most of us are immigrants. And I'm, same with the First Nations. Uh, I mean, do they have the, the, they have 
figured out that they have the right they're in a population they're the minority population but want to control things and what happened in the past maybe wasn't pretty maybe it wasn't great uh, but the past the people agreed to a lot of that uh, their politicians of the day agreed to some of that sort of thing so I think we've got to look at that and say that's in the past right you can't bring the past back you know it's uh, you can't have a tail wagging the dog and I think everybody has to have the same laws the same set of laws and regulations uh, should uh, reserves and not not have self-government of course they should they should have the same self-government that a municipality or a city does have their own council do their own thing in their community but should they have the right to say what we do federally no no province should have the right to say what we do is collectively uh, they should have a say in it, but not a, not, not a veto power. Uh, just some thoughts. I think if we're going to, if we don't, I mean, this crowd that's running around all, all sudden, spring and summer, into the summer, I mean, they have no such suggestions, no solutions, except that uh, uh, whatever idiotic thing they can dream up should be recognized as standard, as part of science, and be put into law, and they should have the same rights for that, uh, for that uh, twist, of, uh, twist of nature or whatever. And you can't run a country that way. Uh, we're not going to compete with China, with Russia, if we, uh, we just have pandemonium like we do. I mean, the adults have to stand up and say, children, you quit throwing your tantrums. Here's what we got to do. And we got to look deeper than that. We've got to look, look east to the UN, to the IMF, and say, all right, guys, we're on to what you're trying to do. Get rid of your insurgents. We're, we're going to clamp down here and uh, get things back into control. Uh, does that mean uh, being racist or putting people, uh, certain groups of people at a disadvantage? No. It does mean putting the the people from other countries are in here trying to insert, trying to cause a revolution. Of course, we're not treating them the same. Get them the hell out of here. They have no right to do that. Uh, you know, people have come from other countries and say, "Well, we got to do a lot of changes." Well, the country they came from did just got a lot of changes to do as well. Why don't they stay home and change it there, make it better? But it's, uh, I think, it's time that we. Uh, said, look, enough is enough. This is crazy. And, and we need some leadership, and we really don't have it. Because if we don't do something, if we don't do something, we're going to be up in a place that uh, we're just, it's not going to be fun. And if one can't see over, see over the, see down the road and see where we're headed, I mean, you just haven't been paying attention. And, uh, but I think the silent majority sees that. And it's time the silent majority stood up and said, look, enough is enough. We're tired of our broadcasters bullshitting us. We're tired of our politicians dancing on clouds and bullshitting us. Uh, we have a country to, to get going. And uh, we've got to get ourselves back into uh, faith. Whatever, you, whatever your faith is, you should have the right to do without shoving it down someone's throat. But faith is an important thing for humanity. And we have to have culture and history. You cannot be pulling down statues. I don't care what the hell you think of that person did. That person did made some good came out of that as well. It wasn't all negative. If it was all negative, we wouldn't be here as a country today. Think about that. You just got to give our heads a shake collectively. And, uh, and I think we have to get back to, I guess, a family, faith, history and culture, and rule of law where everybody is under the same rule of law, the same regulations apply to everybody, whether you're just brand new here, whether you've been here for a hundred years, whether you're First Nations, whether you're whatever you are, we all have the same rules and laws. And we all have to follow and abide by those. There's no special treatment. There's no, there's no passing go with collecting $400 rather than your $200 or whatever it is. Just some thoughts. And uh, I, I can just see that uh, next year at this time, if we keep if things keep going the way they are, 
It's got disaster written all over it. Now you've just got to ask yourself, the clowns that are protesting and ripping things down, do you want them in control? Well, what, are they going to, what are they going to offer uh, as rulers of a country, or leaders of a country? Uh, it just doesn't work. You, they have nothing on the table that they could offer. They just want to destroy, 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 complain, complain, complain. They're spoiled children. They're t having a tantrum in the mall because they can't have four candies instead of one. And I think we have to really understand and see that. But I guess uh, for a Sunday that's all. Uh, uh, think about things, and uh, if you're one of the silent majority, stand up and say something. Uh, get together uh, over coffee and say, hey, we can't do this anymore. This is crazy. Uh, all this politically correct stuff is nuts. Uh, we're not going to find somebody for calling somebody a leprechaun like did Great Britain. Uh, we have a sense of humor about ourselves. Um, what, we're, what we are calling nasty and hate crimes are sort of totally stupid. Uh, meet anybody from Newfinder, Newfoundland, they tell the best Newfie jokes. But any Pollock, he tells the best from the prairies or wherever they have, tell the best Pollock, the best jokes. We laugh at ourselves. We don't take ourselves all that seriously. But we do understand that we need faith, we need family, we need history and culture, and we need some financial leadership and in our in our capital cities and forget this political pandering to idiots now it's interesting that our uh, the teens dance to TikTok, corporations uh, meet on zoom uh, neither with any inkling that the ccp is in their room politicians cater to idiots uh, harass police forces in the name of reform uh, with little inkling that insurgents from Africa, the Middle East, Pakistan are bubbling like sewage foam. And if we don't put a stop to that, we're going to uh, be in a whole place, a whole hurt, a whole bunch. Anyway, that's all for now. Take care. Bye for now.